Hey guys, Tightrope here, bringing you the 17th installment of Micro Tips and Tricks for Company of Heroes 2. First up, we have keeping your mortar hidden in the fog of war. When using a mortar to auto fire or right clicking to target an enemy squad, as soon as the mortar fires the shell, it reveals itself in the fog of war. This makes it very easy for the opponent to notice the mortar firing, have a good idea of what the mortar will be targeting, and then starting to dodge with that target, making the mortar significantly less effective. However, if you use attack ground or the mortar's barrage ability, the mortar does not get revealed in the fog of war until the shell does damage. Your opponent may still hear the mortar firing in the fog of war, however this is harder to notice during hectic fighting and they'll probably also have a much worse idea of what the mortar is actually targeting, making it trickier for them to dodge. The same principle also applies to other weapons such as anti-tank guns. However, because the time between the anti-tank gun getting revealed and the shell landing on the tank is so low, it doesn't really give the opponent time to dodge, so this is much less impactful than it is for the much slower shells of the mortar. And if you exclusively use attack ground on your anti-tank gun, you miss out on the opportunity to roll a hit through the accuracy system, and this will significantly lower your chances of actually hitting the enemy vehicle. Whereas mortars are completely unable to roll a hit through the accuracy system, so you don't have to worry about lowering your chance to hit by using attack ground. For more information on the accuracy and scatter system, check out my starter series on vehicle mechanics. Next up, I go over the finer details of repositioning team weapons. When your anti-tank gun has been firing close to the edge of its arc and you choose to reposition it, during the pack-up animation, the gun switches to facing dead ahead. However, once it sets up, the gun will quickly snap back to the side that it was previously firing at. So if the enemy target is on the other side of the anti-tank gun's arc, this adds a noticeable delay while it rotates before it's ready to fire. This also applies to machine guns, though in their case it is harder to see the weapon rotation. Here the MG42 repositioning and firing on the opposite side takes around 11 and a half seconds. Whereas repositioning the same amount but firing on the same side only takes 7 and a half seconds, roughly a 4 second time difference. So if you ever felt like your team weapon was taking an eternity to start firing, this could be the reason why. With the machine gun you can rotate it a large amount and put the enemy on the side of the arc that was firing last. And for the MG42 that results in it firing around 3.5 seconds faster. However this is a bit more difficult for anti-tank guns. Team weapons do not reload while they're packed up and anti-tank guns have to reload after every single shot. In this example the ZIS is packed up for well over its normal reload time but is only able to fire again after being set up for the normal reload time, though it seems like it does skip the 1 second wind down time. So this is another reason why your team weapon may feel like it's taking a long time to fire, because you packed it up during its reload cycle and it needs to complete that reload before it can fire again. While the anti-tank gun rotates its barrel to face the other side, even though you don't see the reload animation, the anti-tank gun is reloading during this time. So if you rotate the anti-tank gun more immediately after firing to keep the enemy on the same side of the arc like we did with the machine gun earlier, this works out to be around half a second slower for the anti-tank gun because the extra time it takes to spin around delays the reload timer starting. This isn't such a big factor for machine guns since they only have to reload after six or more bursts of firing. I tested packing up the anti-tank gun immediately after firing, midway through the reload and then towards the tail end of the reload cycle, and measured the total amount of time the anti-tank gun was set up for between shots. This worked out to be almost the same for all three tests, so this shows that interrupting the reload cycle does not reset it, and the anti-tank gun will pick up where it left off from once it is set back up again. So you do not need to try and time when to pack up your anti-tank gun, it won't make an impact on how quickly it can fire again. And if you know that you packed up your anti-tank gun immediately after firing, if you're under no time pressure, it may pay to set it up at some stage and let that reload cycle complete 
so that next time it is in combat, it will fire as quickly as possible. This is probably most relevant when you are attack moving the anti-tank gun forwards. This extra delay means the enemy tank could move out of range again before the anti-tank gun fires. Team weapons will automatically recenter themselves after a couple seconds of not firing, though this does appear to vary somewhat depending on when their target disappeared from their cone of fire and what their reload timer is like. That's it for this installment guys, be sure to like, subscribe and share it with your friends but not with your enemies. And you can help support the continued production of this series through my Patreon page which is much appreciated.